Hello everyone and welcome back to Solar System Tourism in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In this video, our exploits solely have to do with fulfilling the contract with the Kerbal Arthur E. King, who I am creating right now. Arthur E. King is a longtime viewer of my Twitch stream, has accumulated many, many struts, and therefore could afford a very extravagant trip. Actually, many extravagant trips, but we're starting off with a particularly difficult one, landing on Mercury. And of course, we intend to bring our three king back. So that's the lander. I chose the lightweight Gemini lander can from FASA, which is the smallest lander can available and frankly cheaty. And to go with that for the main habitation area, we've got the Gemini cabin plus the extended cabin that can carry six more people, or sorry, seven more people, I think. Uh, so basically it's a lander ascent bit at the top, a uh, descent bit, and then the main habitation area, and then we need some stage to capture us into orbit around Mercury, which takes a lot of Delta V, and ultimately I have to go with ion engines. Lots of ion engines attached to a reactor and a thermal power generator, those from KSB Interstellar. So we rack up a lot of Delta V. But is it enough? Well, that's interesting. Note the burn time, 23 days. I can time warp when using those particular ion engines. Each of those was a cluster of 10 and each unit weighs uh, more than 2 tons. Anyway, to get all of this and transfer it off to Mercury, we this, I decided to use the Daenerys rocket, which is a single stage to orbit rocket that looks like a dragon capsule. We also need a supply vessel to send bonus supplies in case, you know, our Kerbal needs to hang out for an extended period of time. So there's just food, water, and oxygen, RCS propellant in the form of aerosene and NTO, and then the ion engine to set up again. And we also needed a return stage because that wasn't built into the original thing, it just captures. So this is going to be a return pusher with, again, ultimately ion engines and xenon gas. So here we go, the launch of the Daenerys Aerospike SSTO. And that's 36 M1 equivalent engines arrayed in an Aerospike, lifting it up. They take a long time to spool up. And this is the supply vessel first. So you can see the large n amount of food, water, and oxygen there. And so Daenerys is a reference to Game of Thrones. Daenerys is the mother of all dragons. This is shaped like a dragon capsule, the bottom part, and it's meant to return. Ideally, it would return to the Monument Launcher Platform. It'd launch off of the Monument Launcher Platform and return to it, but that's a bit of a trick. In the pods on the sides, each of those pods contains two Raptor engines for the final descent and landing and it's supposed to sit in the cradle. It doesn't have landing legs, it's supposed to sit in the cradle, but that's a whole business. It's better at splashing down, to be honest. Anyway, so here it is making orbit. It's very tough to manage aerospikes. They have a lot of thrust weight ratio right at the end, after all. And their uh, trajectory tends to be different than most rockets. So here we are, getting the final bit of it done. Actually, there is one omitted launch that I reverted, and that was because we didn't have adequate RCS on this stage, the stage with two Timberwind engines. These are humongous nuclear engines attached to a liquid hydrogen tank. All the best to transfer with. And so targeting Mercury and plotting that business. I just used MechJeb's maneuver planner and had it do the pork chop plot thing. And that's not a bad transfer, but it's all about how you capture around Mercury, and that always costs a lot. Especially when we're using ion engines, which take a long time to burn. So again, we can time warp uh, during the ion engine burns. I've configured the ion engines for that. Those are lackluster lab engines that I configured myself. They provide 2,800 seconds of ISP, so they're not ridiculous kinds of uh, ion engines or anything. They are based on real engines, but we're going to change that because as it turns out, eventually trying to do the time warping with 23 day burns doesn't work out so well at Mercury orbit when Mercury's orbit is only 88 days. With the outer planets is easier. With outer planets, you know, with their 12 year, 28 year orbits or something like that, a 23 day burn is not going to throw you off that much. With Mercury, though, 
a 23 day burn will throw you off a lot. So, and yeah, the big gas giants, it's easier to capture around them than Mercury. You don't have a whole lot of time around Mercury to do that capture. So anyway, we'll talk about that later. Here we're launching Arthur himself. And this is the spool up time for the Daenerys Aerospike SSTO. Takes a while. And mainly it gets to be an SSTO by virtue of its sheer size. As you scale stuff up, as long as you can maintain structural integrity, the mass scales roughly by the square of the diameter, by the surface area, plus a little bit of extra. And the volume and the mass contained goes up by the cube. So, so the bigger you can make something safely, the better the mass ratio, the better the relationship between the dry mass and the wet mass. So the dry mass doesn't take up that much and you get a lot of delta V out of that. And really that's the only way to do aerospikes. You would not want uh, aerospike SSTOs that are small. You need to make them as big as possible. So we have. <laughs> anyway, uh, so here we go again with the nuclear stage and the two Timberwinds. Again, based on a real proposal, the Timberwinds are Timberwind 250s, the largest available. And they were proposed. Uh, they did not get funded. And here we are with the end of the transfer burn. And you can see that we have some Delta V remaining in the Timberwind stage. We've got insulation on the stage, but no guarantee that the fuel is going to stick around for us once we get to any mid-course adjustment. But I sort of plot the mid-course adjustments believing that we're going to have that Delta V. And next up, we have the return vessel. So again, this is just a pusher. It's just going to... It could just refuel the, the stage that Arthur is in. That's an option. Or it could just push... Arthur back. <laughs> Either way. Oh, so incidentally, the Gemini Light Lander does not have a docking port because the docking port would be too heavy. <laughs> so, so Arthur is going to have to EVA from the Gemini capsule to the Gemini Light Lander. So up we go again. Technically, this should be launching off of an offshore platform as I have designed, but this was before I made that offshore platform, so... Also, we haven't done any returns of the Daenerys stages. We are just launching them. Later on in the series, I do return tests, but not at this point. So, it is in orbit. And so three launches for Mercury was the deal for this stream. It took a lot longer than it seems, because I did a lot of plotting. And a lot of moping about the ion engines. I really didn't want to use ion engines, and... I still don't want to use ion engines, and but here we are, using ion engines. These nuclear engines make me happy though. I like those big things. They're heavy as heck too. They are not lightweight. But they did what they needed to do. So, there we go, and a burn. This is basically a huge fuel tank attached to the reactors and the ion engines. And there we go, getting our closest push distance down with the RCS. And making a very minor mid-course adjustments. Our mid-course adjustments have improved uh, from the first launch to this launch. However, we would like to do the orbit matching burn with Mercury a little bit earlier because the ion engines are going to take so long and that's going to be the trick. The sheer length of time that the ion engines will need to provide the capture burn around Mercury, which is going to use a lot of Delta V, is, is the main issue. This has a lot of Delta V, but of course this has to also be able to return a vessel back to Earth and by pushing it, so it's got a very nice mass ratio now because it doesn't have a payload. Anyway, so that was the beginning of Arthur E. King's exploits in solar system tourism. The highest of the high rollers so far. And boy, did I not charge enough. <laughs> boy, did I not charge enough, as it turns out. This is going to be a very troublesome mission. 
So with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.